people would always kind of be like, oh, your voice is so deep. And I was very self-conscious about it. Whereas now, you know, I, 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 I'm able to use it every day for my job, for, for my career and to speak with people. So I think it's so important to, to love every inch of yourself, your voice, your hair, your everything, everything. Love everything about yourself and just have the confidence that your passion for whatever it is you want to do is enough. Having the drive to do something and the passion to do something and the, the desire to do something, that's all you need. You don't have to change anything about yourself to, to find any job. I'm an only child. Uh, my parents are, are my best friends. I, I love them to the moon and back a million times over. Um, I'm also, we're a big family. Uh, I have a lot of cousins, a lot of aunties and uncles uh, who have been such amazing influences on me my whole life. I'm the youngest out of all my nan's grandbabies. Uh, and being an only child, my cousins were very much like my siblings growing up and they were fantastic influences on me uh on just you know showing me the kind of person that i want to be and uh you know they helped me in school and they babysat me and they did this and they did that for me and now i get to give back to their babies you know what i mean so it's my cousin's babies who are now like my little munchkins who um i feel now a sense of responsibility to be a good influence on them in my career and in my everyday life and i think family for that is so important uh, not everyone is as fortunate um, when it comes to being as close with their family. So I know how fortunate I am that my family is just number one and I can call any of my cousins, any of my aunts, my uncles, any time of day and whatever it is I need, like I know they're there for me. But family to me is everything, really and truly. I, I know it sounds like so cliche, but it is, it, it really, really is. Christmases are always crazy in our family and um, in the sense of that we're just so big. And if any of uh, if my family watches, they're gonna just laugh because we're just such a big family that cramming all of us into a house is just madness. And we have babies, and we have dogs, and we have cats, and we have whatever else. Just trying to have a Christmas dinner. My nan lived uh, in an upper duplex uh, in La Salle, and my grandmother, you know, instilled this sense of open door policy uh, with our family that literally, no matter what time of day, it was just come on in. So New Year's would come around and uh, in her upper duplex, we would cram like over 40 people and she would cook for over 40 people. And she was over 80 years old. She was so incredible and so giving and it was never an issue for her to literally have her house like jam packed with 40 people. Like people are like, we're sitting on chairs, but like on top of chairs, we're sitting on each other. And like, those are some of my best memories, watching my Nan just be so happy to be so overwhelmed with people just always blew my mind. And she was in her eighties. Like we're talking like 81, 82, 83, uh, that she was still doing this for us because she knew how much it meant to us. I knew from when I was younger, I'm, I'm not shy. I talk all the time. Uh, I've never been afraid to, you know, get in front of people and speak and do presentations and stuff in school. And I guess I just figured, I was like, hey, you know, if I like speaking and, you know, and it kind of works for me, then why not, you know, make a career out of it? And I was like around 10 when, so I guess like grade three or four, when I had a school assignment that was asking, you know, who you want to be when you're older. And right away, my answer was Jennifer Hedger uh, from TSN. She was an anchor behind the desk. And I'm a huge sports junkie, uh, soccer girl through and through. And I was like, yeah, I, was like, I wanna be her. I wanna do what she does. I wanna talk about sports or just anything all the time. <laughs> After elementary school and high school, uh, I went to John Abbott and I decided to further my interest and my knowledge in the field. So I took, um, the, what was then called the call program, so creative arts, languages, and literature. Um, I had amazing professors, one of them, of course, Tracy McKee, uh, who is still uh, a broadcaster in the industry in Montreal, who taught me a lot uh, and just really like solidified my love for radio uh, and the intimacy of radio. And after uh, Abbott, I went to Concordia, studied again under some amazing professors in the journalism field, um, got my degree. A couple months prior to starting at Concordia, I started working at the Beat. Uh, I applied and started working in promotions. 
So I started working in our promotions department part-time as a job. I also had another job at the, at the time as well. Uh, so I had two jobs before going into university, which was a bit bananas. But um, I wanted to, you know, quote unquote, get my foot in the door. I loved the station. I was a big fan already. And uh, I knew I was going to be studying journalism. And I was like, what better way to kind of hopefully kickstart my career in this business uh, than to work firsthand with the number one station in Montreal. And I was very fortunate to get hired. Um, and I, yeah, I was, a, I was a promotions agent or a GO as we call it. Um, and I worked in that for about two and a half years, promoting the station, doing events, um, just doing things here and there, basically being kind of like the face of the station on the street, uh, doing events and stuff and interacting with listeners was really, really fun for me. And just helped me realize how much of an impact we have uh, in the city, we're a very local station. Uh, we interact a lot with our listeners, and I think that's so special. So I just fell in love with it even more. Fast forward like two and a half years, they had asked me if I wanted to start doing a few things here and there on the air when I was um, at events. So hopping on during commercials and like, hey, it's Megan Kelly from the street team. Uh, we're here at blah, blah, blah today, and we're doing this, so come and say hi. Just like very small uh snippets on the air and i was so excited i was so nervous like i can't even tell you even though i knew i wanted to do it like when it came time to do it i was like oh my gosh like i was so nervous and then towards the end of summer 2017 as well in august and my boss was like hey like do you want to try doing traffic on the morning show i was like yeah sure sure no problem the thing with with radio and with the internet and stuff things last forever uh, so not too long ago, I listened back to one of my first ever traffic reports. How anyone understood me is, is beyond me. How I have a job is, is beyond me because that, oh my gosh, it's, uh, yeah, it was brutal. There ended up being an opening just on Friday nights, uh, just for Fridays doing traffic. And my boss was like, Hey, we want you to do this. So I signed my first contract just doing traffic. And over the last, um, almost three years. Uh, things have changed and changed and I've been very blessed to have so many different opportunities in the field to now um, hosting a few of my own shows, which is just bananas to me. People on the other end of, of the radio, people that are listening to me, are going through things too. Some people are having the best day of their lives, some people are having the worst day of their lives. Um, and it's our job and it's, it's what makes it feel so special to me is to make their day to make them feel okay for as long as they're listening, whether it's five minutes, two hours, all day. Just bring some, bring light, bring love, bring joy, bring happiness, bring confidence, make them feel a part of something. Sometimes it still amazes me that people, you know, like know my name or know any of our names. Life is so busy, you know, life is so crazy, especially now. And uh, it always, I guess it just, it's very humbling that people know you and it, it's just nice to know that, um, you make an impact on someone's day. I always try and make someone smile like every day. That's my goal is if I can make someone laugh, make someone smile, uh, just take their mind off things for a little bit. And it's just very humbling when someone's like, oh, like, yeah, you're so-and-so. Like it's, it's very, it's still very surreal to me.